pleasant greetings to you. Today, let us talk about good stewardship. For this first part, let us go to catechetics. Catechetics is short for catechetical apologetics. Many Protestants say that in accordance with the verse from Matthew chapter 23 verse 9, we should never call any man father. Therefore, Catholics are breaking the command of Jesus by addressing their priests as father. But of course to take this verse to such a literal extreme is a gross mistake. There are at least three ways in scripture by which a person may be addressed as father. 1. Our male biological parent. 2. A male spiritual leader. 3. The first person of the Holy Trinity. As regards number 1, as male biological father, the scripture refers repeatedly to male biological parents as father, when for example, God himself says in Exodus 20:12, to honor your father and mother. As regards number 2, father as a male spiritual leader, Jesus himself referred to Abraham as Father Abraham when telling the story of Lazarus and the rich man in Luke 16:24. Obviously, Christ did not mean for his words to be taken to such a literal extreme, as if the word Father was a forbidden word that must only be applied to God. Rather Jesus was addressing the sin of pride among the scribes and Pharisees who loved to be called teacher and father. But in their pride they pointed to themselves rather than to God the Father, from whom they received true fatherhood. If we choose to interpret this literally, then in addition to Father, the titles of teacher and master should not be used. But did you know that the word doctor is from the Latin word docere, meaning to teach? And that Mr. and Mistress or Mrs. are also forms of the word master. Thus, anyone calling a person doctor or mister would be as guilty as a Catholic who calls a priest father. Please, let us just ask God's help to free us from this narrow-mindedness. But what is bad stewardship? Here is a bad stewardship story. Let us listen to the story. A man who once stole a loaf of bread was ordered by the king to be hanged. When the man was allowed to say his final words, he said, Oh your highness, I can plant an apple seed and it will bear fruit overnight. My father taught me the secret and it would be a pity if the secret died with me this day. One more day of life was allowed to the thief. On the following day, he dug a hole for the seed, then said to the king, This seed can only be planted by a person who never stole a thing in his life. I cannot plant the seed. The king then asked the prime minister to plant the seed. The prime minister had to admit that he had stolen something once. Likewise, the treasurer had to beg off because he, too, had stolen something. Even the king himself had to admit to a petty theft. Then the thief said to all, All of you had everything you needed throughout your life, and yet you stole. I, who stole a loaf of bread so that my family might not starve to death, must die. Everyone present was happy to see the man pardoned. End of the story. Of course, no one seems to be good in our story. That is why I chose it as an example of bad stewardship, that is, both stewards and sheep are bad. But there's a lesson here. In today's Gospel story, Jesus tells us that the scribes and Pharisees bind up heavy loads, hard to carry, to lay on other men's shoulders, just as a king put the heavy load of hanging on the shoulders of the poor man who stole a loaf of bread. And here is the simple lesson, if we only kept our own sins ever before our eyes, we would be very slow to condemn and punish others. What are the marks of bad stewardship? Here are some marks of bad stewardship. From the book of the prophet Malachi chapter 2, verses 1 to 17, part of which is our first reading today, we have the following bad traits of both leaders and followers. 1. No listening heart. 2. Not giving glory to God's name. 3 breaking faith with each other 4 not safeguarding the life of faith 5 not bothered by unjust treatment of others in complacency and 6 persistence in doing evil despite engagement with ritual prayers 
Other bad marks are in the Gospel of Matthew we just heard. 1. Hearing, speaking or preaching without personal living out of the message. 2. Burdening others, in abuse of authority. 3. Indifference to others' suffering. 4. Seeking power out of insecurity. 5. Projecting an infallible image or a narcissistic obsession with self-image. And 6. Being blinded by ego in his, or her, ego circle. And there are still other marks found in scripture. 1. Mistreatment of those who disagree. Remember the fate of the servants of the king in the hands of those invited to the wedding feast. They were mistreated and killed. 2. Acting irrationally to prove authority. See King Rehoboam for example, when he said to his subjects, Whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will make it heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. 3. Harboring anger towards others or provoking unjust and unnecessary anger in others. Paul reminds us. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up with the training and instruction of the Lord. 4. Making decisions based on popularity and not on God's values. Pilate was one such bad leader. Wishing to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. And 5. Lacking in gentleness, generosity and service. We rid of Ezekiel's message against the shepherd of Israel. You did not strengthen the weak, nor heal the sick, nor bind up the injured. You did not bring back the strayed, nor seek the lost, but you lorded it over them harshly and brutally. How do we take sheep steps toward good stewardship? So how do we improve our character and build a healthy foundation for a healthy stewardship? 1. Let us identify where our weaknesses are where we have taken shortcuts and quick fixes. It may be that we only use fear and punishment to instill good discipline on others. It may be that our weakness is in being manipulative of other people's emotions to win them to our side. Or maybe we lack the patience to listen to others from our hearts. Know these weaknesses and own them. 2. Look for unhealthy behavioral patterns. Even when we know these weaknesses, we may have difficulty addressing them because we have established some patterns of thinking and behaving. These may have grown old with us and may be difficult to change. But not so. If we are able to get the habit of remembering to take our prescribed medications, say after every four hours, despite our age, then we can certainly add or subtract some habits, if we consider them important. 3. Personally address these attitudes progressively, one step at a time. The key is one little resolution at a time, not two or half a resolution. Remember, do as you can, not as you can't. 4. Apologize to those we have wronged. Yeah, we're not perfect. Let us not add to our imperfections by not admitting our faults and failures. What if the apologies are not accepted? It does not matter. As long as you give it out of love and humility, God blesses these acts. And 5. Always stay teachable and rebuild. Whether we're 7 or 77, docility is an enduring virtue of growing old gracefully. We are stewards not only of relationships with God and others. We are also stewards of our own spirits. From now on, take steps to rebuild your spiritual body. Spend considerable time feeding and tending your spirit. It's God's after all. Here is a sheepish story and a challenge for all of us. In West Africa, people learn how to carry heavy burdens on their heads. In Sierra Leone, West Africa, Freetown, a Christian missionary learned of a woman in the capital city whose regular employment was that of a human delivery truck. She delivered engine blocks from one repair shop to other repair shops. Four men would lift the engine block onto her head, sometimes onto a tray, 
at other times, just on top of some layers of rags. Then off she would go across town carrying this enormous weight. One day, this lady came to her destination and found that no one was there to assist her in taking the load off her head. She waited, as long as one can wait with an engine block on one's head. Finally, she decided to try to remove it herself. In so doing, she broke her neck and died. Bad stewards and sheep can really tie up heavy burdens on others. Let us pray for the enlightenment of these bad stewards who may be parents, grandparents, priests, nuns, government leaders, or public officials. Most specially, let us pray for those under their care, silent victims of their manipulation, their violent anger and their insensitivity. May the spirit of good stewardship be in our hearts. May God bless us all. Amen.